Welcome moms and sirs to this channel webinar pages, your training and development channel where you can learn, lead, and make a difference. If this video has helped you, please click like, subscribe, and share in return. We will be very grateful. How to make a training design for NAAP recognition part one. Who wants the NAAP? So, the title of the Deped Order na to ay Guidelines for NAAP Recognition of Professional Development Programs and Courses for Teachers and School Leaders. Because of the issuance of DPED Order No. 1, Series of 2020, our process in creating training designs for proposed projects, courses, and programs changes drastically. Because we need to align our proposed project or proposed courses. So, the ating proposed courses as of this time ay dapat na recognize na ng NAEA True Recognition Evaluation Committee. So, lahat po ng mga proposed natin ng programs or courses will be submitted to the Rec Recognition Evaluation Committee. Then, pag nakapasa kayo sa evaluation, it will be forwarded to the Recognition Approval Committee wherein you will be issued the Certificate of Recognition. Then, nakalagay doon kung ilang uh, PDP units yung ma-earn ng certain training na yan, certain program, certain course. Okay, so ito po yung ating legal basis bakit tayo magkaroon ng recognition program for all proposed PDP courses or programs po natin. Okay, so first we need to define what's the difference first with, between PD course, PD program. Are they the same concept? Okay, by definition, ito po yung professional development course. Naka-highlight po doon yung ating clue word. Pag course yung sinasabi natin, it refers to the set of learning sessions. Kung sa klase pa as a teacher, this is your main topic for the day. Topic lang session. Isang session lang. So meaning, if you complete all sessions, lima hanggang ten sessions or maybe more, ang tawag doon ay course. Professional Development Course. Ang purpose ng having a professional development course or yung set of learning sessions so nakahayag din po dito is to enhance our competencies. That's the first. Second po ay teaching and learning practices natin i-enhance din po natin as teachers. Okay. Next is to synthesize learning and to provide timely and relevant response to our different needs in the workplace. So, and lastly po, I'm to prepare them for the next career stage. So, the program is simply a combination of courses. Yung courses natin, pag pinagsama-sama po natin yun, ang, mang, ang mangyayari, siya ay magiging development program. Yung program po natin, it could be standards-based. May standards ba tayo sa DepEd? Pwede din needs-based. Anong ginagamit natin sa pagkuha ng needs-based natin? Uh, that is LD&A. Learning and Development Needs Assessment. But meron din tayong tinatawag na emerging needs. What do you mean by emerging needs? Yun yung mga needs na kailangan natin at the moment. Hindi siya part ng plan, ng annual implementation plan natin. Yan yung sinasabi natin, yan yung need ng school for you as the employee, as of the moment. Then pwede din siya purposely planned and designed set. Yan yung ipinapasok po natin sa ating mga AIPs. Pero as of this time, the regional office is no longer using AIPs. Ginagamit namin ay WFPs na po, Work and Financial Plan. Okay, I guess it's uniform sa lahat ng SDOs ng pop-up schools. Okay, so here, so tatlong klase, standards-based, needs-based, purposely planned, and design set of professional development courses. Yung main purpose po din natin ay the professional advancement or development of 
teachers and school leaders. By the way po, gina-highlight po namin dito kasi yung fund na ginagamit for this is HRD fund. Yung ating participants are teachers, school leaders. Wala po tayong participant na ng teaching personnel. Ito yung sinasabi natin basis ng ating training programs or courses. Yung ating mga professional standards. Kasi the main uh, the main task here is to align our pro, uh, professional development programs and courses to the different professional standards that we have. So first, we have PPST. That's DO42-0217. Followed by DO24 refers to the professional standards for school heads naman ito. So PPSSH Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads. Yung last naman ay uh, babawasan mo lang yung H sa second. That's PPSS. So Philippine Professional Standards for Supervisors. So dito uh, NIAP is telling us we could create our own development programs, development courses as long as it is aligned with our Philippine professional standards. So we need to say, if you are a teacher, so most likely your target participants ay mga teachers. So therefore, yung basis po natin, you could use DO42-617. Pero if you're a school head, you have two options sa school head. Pwede, you could use the BPSD na standards mo natin or the PPSS stage sa students naman po. Pag yung participants natin ay mga students. And for supervisors, uh, you are included po in, in generic term po kasi ang tawag natin dito ay meron po tayong tinatawag na teachers, meron din po tayong tinatawag na school leaders. Generic term po natin for head teachers, department heads, principals, supervisors, including assistant school division superintendent, SBSS po natin. Maski yung regional director natin ay included sa term na school leaders. So yan po yung generic po natin, school leaders and teachers. Okay, so based sa DO1 series 2020 po, ito po yung ating application requirements for recognition. Meaning to say po, pag mayroon po kayong program or course na i-implement either sa school, sa district, or sa division, or kung gusto mo talaga pang, si pang, pang bigating regional or national, dapat ito po yung ating gagawin. So ito po, uh, I'll be presenting first mga requirements natin that we'll discuss one by one kung ano po yun. So, so these are the application requirements po. So mayroon lang po tayong anim na memorize. Sige. First, copy of the truly accomplished and sign form R.1. Actually, as I said, said template po ito. So form R.1, PD course application. Yan po yung first natin. Second po ay copy of all learning resources. Actually, yung ibibigay natin dito, these are all in PDF format ng mga file. The second requirement po, copy of all learning resources. It refers to session guides, slide decks, the PowerPoint presentation that you have made as a speaker, or as a learning fancy po natin. Then, you have the modules, kung may module po. By the way, hindi po lahat yan ibibigay po ha, kung ano lang yung applicable. Baka wala kang module, so hindi ka nalang magsasubmit for recognition, no? Kung ano lang po yung available, kung session guides meron ka, and slide decks, that's the most common for learning passive. Pangatlo, yung requirement ay yung copy ng feedback form or end-of-the-day evaluation. I guess you experienced this one already. Have you remembered na every after training natin, bago ka magpawag ay pinapawag, meron pang binibigay na link uh, end of program evaluation. That's part po. Sa level 1, yung, yung sa level 1 po natin, included yung sa speaker. Sa experience, sa training. Well, number 4, refers to the level 2 naman po, yan po yung ating reflection. What have you learned during the training? 
Di ba, mayroong pagpayag during yung salit na ibinibigay, you will be asked of the different reflections you have on the topics delivered. Then, pang lima po ay copy ng CV. CV Nino. Tumitulong detail ng ating learning fancy or resource person. Uh, no matter kung ilan yung resource person natin, isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, basta ilalagay mo yung kanilang CV. May template po din ito. Oh, uh, I'll show it. Then, the last requirement ay yung copy na NEA budget estimate. Kasi for a certain programmer course, you need to have a budget. Okay? Hindi lang po, uh, hindi lang po palagi ito, it could be sponsored by any NGOs po. So, we need the six required document po, that's yung NEA budget estimate. So, dito po, we'll discuss that one later. So, first, we'll have to discuss ano po yung content ng ating application form. 4R.1 Professional Development Course or Program Application Form Okay, ito po yung content So, by, by parts po tayo We start with the table A So it refers to the Learning Service Provider Profile Pag kayo po, yung provider So information din yung Yes, okay. So, ano po yung content dito? The learning service provider. Sino yung program na provide of service? Second, complete office address. Office ako pa kung uh, ano address ng school nito. Next, contact person. And mobile number. You could also provide the telephone number. Pag walang telephone number, natapika mo na lang or not. Then, next ay yung email address. So, provide your deathbed email address. I guess everyone now will receive the message na po sa ating mga email na i-activate yung ating Office 365. Hindi ko yung scam. All deathbed employees were sent that email to activate our 365 accounts. So, then, less information sa so first table po natin is about authorization number. So, Next po doon ay papasok yung recognition. Hindi lahat po ng authorized na service providers na ngayon external ay pwede magkanda kagad ng trainings. It should be recognized by NEA. The program profile. Ito po yung content si Hub 8. Nagsimula po sa title. Uh, title ng training, title ng course, title ng program. So, papasok na yung tinatawag natin national. Ano si rational? So, ito po yung content dapat ni rational. Dapat si rational ay 300 to 350 minimum words. Ito yung content ng rational. Papasok po dito yung knowledge natin sa research. Kasi isusulat natin dito ang outline ng ating reasons for offering this program or course. Bakit natin ikakandang yung training na to? Second, you need to write here your considerations of why this program or course is needed sa school or sa SDO. So, and ano yung need na ina-address niya for teachers, for teachers and participants, or for school leaders. So, that's the second consideration po. Third consideration in writing the rational I. It includes also the overview of how relevant and reliable research relates to the content and or delivery of the program. So, papasok dito yung pagsasite natin ng different resources. Different studies include citations in the overview and you need to provide references to the sources outline. Actually, uh, before before implementing the program, you need to know uh, your research researchers that will support your training mo. Nasasabihin mo na ikakanda po siya yung training na to kasi this was proven to be effective. Diba? May basis po tayo. So, doon po natin isusulat sa rational na part. 
Okay. Third, ay yung program description po natin. Now, we need to remember ilang words, minimum words po, 100 to 150. By the way, we are conscious of this kasi when we evaluate programs po, uh, when we go to the point, wala pang hindi ka nag-iikot-ikot. So dito, sa program description, it includes the terminal objective. And, kung mayroong terminal, meron din enabling objective. Okay. So dito, include natin, refer to what participants will gain in terms of his or her professional knowledge. And, pwede po din pag hindi knowledge, it could be in terms of professional practice and or professional engagement on terminal objective. Actually, nasisimula siya by this statement. By the end of this program, participants will be able to Gaya dito po sa ating activity by the end of this four-day training program, the participants shall be able to craft the entry action plan. Yan yung sinasabi natin by the end of the training, yan po yung target natin. Okay, then papas yung idea about meaning new objectives, are the specific objectives to support, that support the terminal objectives natin. Meaning to say, mula sa terminal objective, Pag i-chinap-chop po natin yung chop-chop to smaller pieces, ang smaller pieces na po yan, tawag doon ay enabling objectives. Okay. So, we we'll have an example actually here. Yan po ay si terminal objective. It focus on performance and product ng ating activity. Ano naman po si enabling objective? Ang sabi ko nga kanina, it's a four part of or pwede chop smaller chunks ng ating terminal objectives. Okay. If yung ating, yung ating pong enabling objectives, just like sa ating mga klase po, di ba may mga competencies tayo na mas kinakalagay na sa merits? Pagdating natin sa, sa klase, yung sinachop-chop pa rin po natin. Anong tawag natin doon? Sub-tasking. Amen, right? Mula sa bigger competency, sinabtas natin to smaller competency. Ang tawag dun, mula sa enabling objective na yun, sinabtsap pa natin into smaller pieces pa, ang tawag dun ay session objectives. Diba? Okay. Session objectives describe what learners will be able to do right after a learning session. Let's have a sample. By the end of the four-day training program, LMD specialists will be able to draft needs-based training design that applies adult learning approaches and technology. So, ano ba yung product po natin dito sa terminal objective? LMD specialists will be able to so makadraft po kayo ng needs-based training design. So, yan po yung ating main objective. So, paano po yan natin i-chat-chat? Hindi naman po pwede na yan yung term yung automatic makakagawa kayo. So, there are some parts of the objective that we have. So, ang gagawin po natin, mula sa term yung objective po na yan, gagawa tayo ng enabling objectives. Mula sa bigger chunk ng objective. So, these are our sample enabling objectives for this terminal objective. First, bago tayo makagawa ng needs-based training design, we need to develop an LDNA plan. LDNA, Learning and Development Needs Assessment Plan. So, yan po yung unang gagawin natin to validate learning needs of target participants. That's the first enabling. Pangalawa po ay before you would make the needs based training design, ay dapat mag-draft ka na training design that details learning objectives, topics and methodologies based po sa ginawa natin LDNA plan. So, nag-step by step po tayo na. Yan na po ba yung last? Hindi pa. Kasi sa training, uh, needs based training design, kailangan natin na monitoring and evaluation plan, M&E plan. Hindi lang po tayo mula sa implement 
implementing that one, we need also to monitor and evaluate our activity. So, mula sa bigger no objective, yung term na objective natin, ito yung sample enabling objectives po natin. Okay. Ano ba yung sample na session objective? So, mula sa sample enabling objectives natin, may pili tayo ng isa. Sample, ha? let's start with number one. Pumili tayo kay number one. Yan po yung ating enabling, di ba? So, step by step tayo mula terminal, eto, objective. Second natin enabling, we use number one. Develop an LDNA plan to validate learning needs of target participants. So, dito, ano yung smaller chart ng enabling objective? Alam ba ni participants si LDNA? So, we need to know about what's LDNA. So, here, First natin na session objective is to explain the value and objectives of LDNA, Learning and Development Needs Assessment. After explaining the value of the objectives, then we proceed to, to expand the key processes ng LDNA. Bago tayo makagawa ng LDNA plan. Next session objective po dito ay we need to know how to differentiate the different LDNA methods and tools na pwede po natin magamit. And lastly is, uh, dito na tayo gagawa draft or develop now the learning and development needs assessment plan now. So, based on that one, you could now see the flow from terminal enabling session. Pag binalikan pa, pag in intertwine po natin yung process, we go sa, sa pagsinabi natin vice versa. Ito po yung mangyayari. From terminal, ginawa natin, ginawa natin enabling. Enabling objectives po natin ay pwede isa, dalawa, tatlo. Depende po sa terminal objective. Hindi lang po yan isa-isa. Now, pwede po isang terminal objective, mayroon kayong dalawa, tatlo, apat, na enabling objectives. Okay. Yung enabling objectives na po yan ay so from that bigger the big objective chinap po natin ulit chinap chap po natin into smaller so pwede po sa isang enabling meron din isang session objective. Pero hindi yan po oh, hindi yan po generalistic na one is one. Pwede isang enabling dalawa tatlo, apat, lima session objectives. Okay po? So, yan po yung sequencing. Pero pag binaligtad, pag binaligtad po natin yan, from session objective to enabling, dapat it will also be true. Kung mayroon kang limang session objectives, dapat yung, if you will go up, you could attain the enabling objective. Then, Pag na-attain natin si enabling objective, we could also attain our terminal objective. So, this is a cyclic process po. Balintanan. Hindi lang po yung true from up down, but also uh, from the bottom up. The process po. Okay. So, kung tatanungin nyo, anong pinaka-simplest na objective dito na pinaka-madaling maintindihan? That's the last part of session objective. Kasi alam mo, that's specific po. Pag yung bigger part po po tayo, so hindi pa po natin alam yung mga specifics, yan po yung ating terminal objective. The objectives should follow the SMART principle. Alam po natin si SMART, di ba? That should be specific, define your goal, or detail po. Then, M, papasok measurable. So, papak dito yung idea na dapat yung objective po natin can be measured. Hindi po siya abstract. Then, attainable. Uh, the other word po dito ay achievable. Then, relevant. The other word is result-oriented. Realistic. At saka yung last time bound. So, dapat may deadline. Baka kasabi natin dito, by the end of this four-day training program of the scholars, the scholars should craft qualitative research in 10 years. So, okay na tayo sa program description. So, for ilalagay natin information sa table ay program or the professional development priorities. Ano ba 
yung basic uh, basic natin na reference ng priorities ng DepEd in terms of professional development. Dito po nakasulat yung different priorities ng DepEd in terms of professional development. Yan po yung DM DepEd Memorandum Number 50 Series of 2020. Ah, yung na natin yung title. Hanggang anong year lang? Hanggang anong year? Hanggang this year. So, pero po, don't worry po. Kasi uh, ang ating priorities is already reflected sa ating basic education development plan. Uh, diba? Until 2022. Sige. <clears throat> Next po ay isusulat po natin kung sino na sino yung ating target participant. So it refers to the different participants based on their career stage po. Subject area, grade level. So ilalagay mo lang doon kung sila sino. Kung sabihin mo sila teachers 1, 2, 3, career stage 1. So sulat mo. Pwede rin uh, school heads or uh, the participants of this course are the school heads, career stage 1, and it's here, uh, career stage 2. So yan po yung susulat namin, target participant information then yung six natin na information is applicable lang po pero we all know that lahat po tayo dito sa number six ay uh, wala po tayong susunod dito kasi this refers to PRC program accreditation number actually po yung ating recognition process sa Dayang region is a continuous process po after recognizing sa Dayang region i-apply po yan sa PRC for accreditation Kasi yung Naya Prigion 8 po natin is accredited ng PRC. Para po, wala tayong problema in renewing our licenses. Kasi makakaroon po kayo ng units, ng pwede yung ng, ng PD units. Sige. So, this, uh, this, is all, this information is only for non-DepEd learning service providers. Seven, delivery platform po. Sino may idea about delivery platform? Ano yung platform na gagamitin natin when you deliver your program or course? May tatlong options lang. Tatlo. So it will be online, pwede pong face-to-face -face at saka blended. Pwede yung uh, combination ng face-to-face -face at saka online. So yan po yung option na pwede natin ilagay doon sa table. Then the last part is ang hirap nung gagawin dito kasi yung need to write the date of implementation. Ikaw po yung mag-design as the learning service provider kung kailan mo i-implement. So, lalagay mo lang po dito yung start date to end date. Sa isang program, pwede pong isulat kung ilang course, some courses po natin. Pwede isa, dalawa, tatlo. Pero yung most common, isang, isang program or course, isa yung course na implement po natin. Pero pag complicated, pag complicated po yung ating uh, yung ating program, gaya po na sa sabi natin ABC. ABC plus natin tayo involves three subjects. We have math, science, English. So, kung yan po yung tatlong subjects na content po natin, so most likely your courses will be subdivided into three. The focus course one will focus on English. Course 2 will focus on science and course 3 will focus on the math po natin na subject. So yan po yung sinasabi dito natin na LSPs can attach one or more courses in a program for their condition. So dito po na part, we need to list down all courses you are applying for recognition. Then susunod po na part ay provide a detailed description of each course on the course design page. So actually this is a tabular tabular data po, so ilalagay niyo po doon yung ating detailed description. Then, ito po yung ating course list na table. By the way, don't be confused sa numbering po natin kasi yan yung ibinigay na numbers sa template. Meaning, pag number 9, yan po na refer sa course. Pag 10, title. So, ang sabi ko nga kanina, kung ano yung title, ikaw ang gagawa ng sarili ng title. Then, next, Papasok yung idea ng uh, professional standards. Ano yung ginamit natin dito or ano yung covered na professional standards? For example, kung training for teachers, here sabihin natin literacy training for English teachers. Siyempre, yung gagamitin mo dito ay PPST kasi teachers naman. 
So mag-aalay po tayo. Pero kung dito ay generic naman, nasabihin na, sasabihin natin uh, yung university level of all employees. All employees in your school. So dito it includes your school head, department head. So point in dalawa na professional standards covered. It could be PPST or PPSSH. Then, schedule. So, isusulat mo yung start date hanggang end date ng course 1 na yan. Sa course 1 lang. Kung may isang course kayo for the program, so that will be the start hanggang end date. Then, we focus more on modality. Yung modality ng course natin, you have how many options here? So, sa modality, ilang options meron tayo? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. Eh, na po pwede. Kasi as teachers, sometimes kasi, sasabihin natin, I could learn on this course, always sa mind natin, seminars. Ah, magsis-seminar ako. I will attend training. Diba? Not always yung learning of professional development natin ay through seminars, courses. 70% of what we learn is from job. That's correct. Sa job embedded learning. You have eight forms of or eight modalities ng course natin. So pwede, for course, kung sabihin mo na ah, pwede pala natin gawin to in a form of learning action set. Learn a lot sessions lang. Hindi mo kailangan mag-train. Mag-training. To attend a training. Kasi it entails money. Pag nagpa-enroll kayo ng training provided by, uh, provided by external learning service providers, sigla nung babayad kayo. So it entails money. So kung pwede na learning action set or pwede natin job embedded learning, di ba sabihin natin, uh, incorporate ICT in the teaching learning process. Ang sasabihin mo, sir, kung ICT, mag-training ako, eh may option naman to have mentors. We have ICT, the good employees of ICT, di ba? Pwede na mo ganun, mentoring or coaching. Or, kung mayroon kayo talang magaling na teacher, it could be job embedded learning. I-assign mo sa kanya, then siya na yung gagawin. So, it could be training course, seminar, conference. Benchmarking naman po ay this is somewhat uh, a type of modeling. Pupunta kayo ng isang office na yun ang kanilang best practice. Gaya ng SPM, di ba? Level 3 schools. So, doon kayo pupunta. Okay? So, yan po yung part ng modality. So, pipili lang kayo. Based sa course po natin. Okay? Sige. So, next part ay sa table 3 course design. Ano pong content ng course design? Detailed description of each of the course by breaking it into discrete sessions. So, dito, from the word pa lang na detailed description. Ano ang gagawin natin sa course na ina-applyan mo? What are the things to do? So, dito mo ang ilalagay. So, so parang dito mo, kung, kung naliligaw ka ng babae, dito mo sasabihin lahat na ibibigay ko sa iyo ang buwan at mga bituin. Okay, sa ating course design ay ito po yung contents from number 14 hanggang 22. Of course, title hanggang resource person or learning facilitator. Ito po yung meat ng ating application kasi dito natin inilalagay yung step by step na gagawin ng participants for the set course. Sige, simulan po natin. Sa course title, ah, walang problema yan, course title, ang dalila. Ano may topic niya? Course description. Oh, course description type. So, yung topic po natin, it could be listing of main topics or key messages sa natin. Ang um, content ng course po natin. So, yan. Okay lang, content and key learning points. Next po ay yung sa 18 naman, session objective. So, discuss po natin kanina, this is the smallest chunk ng objective. So, describe your session objective. So, sabihin mo, at the end of the session, the participant shall be able to craft a re-entry action plan. So, ganyan po. Sample lang po yun. Oh. Or, sasabihin natin, at the end of the session, the participant shall create or draft a lesson plan incorporating ICT technologies and tools. Ganyan lang po. Then, 19, methodology. So, 100 to 150 words. So, be, be, 
be aware po na yung limit is 100 hanggang 150 lang po the words for this part. So yung methodology po natin, it includes the different learning resources that teachers or school leaders will engage in. Part po ng ating methodology. So sa activities, not only the activities, but the learning resources. So second, period describes how the presenter will facilitate each session. So kung si presenter po ay gagamit ng na different like ta computer so ilalagay po natin doon or kung yung si, kung si presenter ay gagamit ng quizzes, kahoot or different application programs ilalagay po natin doon so paano niya ipa-facilitate yung ating session then it also includes how the participants will engage with the content and meet the domain strengths and indicators in the selected professional standards. So yan po yung content ng methodology. Paano ni Learning Passy or ni Presenter i-deliver yung kanyang session. 20. Ika-20 po na part that pertains to assessment strategies. So dapat 50 hanggang 75 words na. Ano yung assessment tool na gagamitin ni Learning Passy ni Resource Person? So dito, you, uh, it, it is explained here how the learning outcomes will be assessed. Pa, paano kayo i-assess? You could be a uh, assessment tool na gagamitin. Ano yung gagamitin niya? Okay. If possible, dito po, as the learning service provider, dapat i-attach po natin yung assessment tool na gagamitin. Yung pinakamadaling assessment tool, uh, assessment tool po natin na uh, usually ginagamit ay uh, knowledge, sasabihin natin the level of knowledge of so the participants after having the session. Yun po yung mas madaling. What have you learned after the session? Yan po yung pinakamadaling assessment tool. Okay. Next po ay isusulat sa number 20 yung output. For that session, ano po yung output dapat? Po sa output, describe what teachers school leaders outputs to achieve learning output. Last part po ng table D ay resource person or learning facilitator. Sino po kanya yung expected na learning facilitator sa inyo proposed course or program? Ito naman, uh, sa so, mga usual natin na CV template, mamaya ay present kung ano yung content ng CV template, ilalagay mo lang yung needed information. Okay, sa ating mga, mga proposals or sa ating program or course proposals, hindi mawawala yung part ng budget. May mga training na hindi kailangan ng budget, pero most of the trainings kailangan ng pera. So pwede yung MOOE, maintenance and other operating expenses or quality, my own operational expense. So, so dito po, sa program implementation plan, it includes the funding source, budget requirements and monitoring and evaluation. Let's start with number 23, funding source. Saan kaya natin kukuha, kukunin yung fund? Ano yung first option natin? MOOE, pwede. Pag division level naman po or district, pwede natin HRD. Human Resource Development Fund. Pero pupunduhan lang po kayo ng division pag advance yung submission ng recognition application. Kasi pag na-approve yung recognition application mo na to be implemented division-wide, syempre, yung division yung magbabudget based sa yung sinabit na budget estimate. So, dapat alam mo kung paano magbudget, hindi pwede na lumagpas ka sa target. Sige, pwede yung MOE, pwede yung sayo, pwede yung sa school. MOE pa rin yung masasayo. Uh, pwede din yung may sponsor, may partnership po tayo na gagawin. So, kung sino may. Uh, may idea kasi yung iba na pwede mag-registration. Mag kung wala kang pondo, registration. So, but we haven't experienced it yet. Kung na may nag-submit ng proposal for recognition na magbabayad yung participants. <laughs> Kasi most likely yung nagsasubit sa original law is always charged to HRD, PSFT, or MOE. Uh, wala pa kami experience na by registration. Pero dito sa ating form, nakalagay doon na pwedeng may registration. 
Pero, dapat yung registration is justified. Hindi pwede na overpriced. Oh, always talaga. Kailangan may resibo kasi hindi makakapag-reimburse pag hindi official receipt. Okay. So, so budget requirements, so how will the program, so dito papasok yung sinasabi, how much will be collected in each course. So, nalagay natin doon. Part siya ng budget requirements. Okay. Next. Ito yung important budgeting facts po natin. Okay. Ito po yung guidelines or mga debit orders na uh, research po natin ito. So, kaya i-download po natin that will govern us on the allocation for venue. Venue means and snacks and room accommodation for official activities organized and conducted by them. And kasali po tayo dito. So, ito po yung dalawang debit orders na gagamitin po natin as reference. Debit order number 2, series 2018, at saka debit order number 15, series 2017. Simulan natin sa 2018, number 2, DO number 2, series 2018. Okay, dito po, nakasulat, kung yung gagamitin natin as venue ay gaya ng REL sa Deped Regional Office 8, di ba? Pag mayroong ganun, REL, eco text. So, pag yung ganun po yung venue, or sa Baguio City kayo, teachers ka. So, yung ating budget per head ay magkano? Not to exceed per box pala, pakit ina per head. Per box, per person not exceed 1,500 per day, per day po. So kung 5 days kayo, so 1, 5 times 5. Ah, pag real, pag ecotech yung venue, 1, 5. Kung ito ay 3 to 5 days or 3 or more days, ano? pero may tayong tayo mga activities na hindi umaabot ng 1 day or hindi siya naging core ng 3 meals, meaning to say, uh, meron kayong snacks, breakfast, and lunch lang, walang dinner. One, month, one day lang na activity. Walang accommodation. Oh, walang siyang accommodation that you can say at night. So dito, ang ating, ang, ating, ang ating amount will vary on the type of meal that you have. Example, pag breakfast, you have maximum of 200. Breakfast yan. Pag snacks naman po, AM or PM, 100. 100 sa umaga, 100 sa hapon. Okay. So, pag lunch and dinner, 400 per person. By the way, remember this one na kasi part ng budget estimate natin, yung proposal mo, ay dapat isulat mo doon. Then ilang days. Sige. Ito pag gumagamit ka ng well, you know, eco time. Or, sample na lang po dito is kung nasa school kayo gumagamit kayo ng school facility. Hindi naman kayo nagpapayat, di ba? Gamit kayo ng classroom, gym, ganun. Pero, sa system mo, kung wala kayo, you will get. Then, cater na lang. So, yung cater, kung less na na day, dito kayo papasok. So, meaning to say, pag cater, may lunch at dalawang snacks lang kayo, so, you will have a budget of 600. 400 sa lunch, 100 na... Uh, 100 pesos for morning, some 100 pesos after the snack. So, a total of 600. So, kung ibibidin niya yan, pwede yung magbid will fall below. Di ba yung budget mo, ABC, authorized budget of contract is 600 per person, pwede siyang magbid yung below, 599. Pwede. Pero, sigurado hindi man, mananalo sa bidding kung mag 600 plus siya. Kasi yung limit mo lang per head ay 600. Okay. Okay, sa DO15 naman, series of 2017, pag hindi kayo gumagamit ng, uh, pag gumamit tayo ng non-dep and meaning to say, sa labas kayo like hotels, will be accommodated. So ano yung budget natin dyan? Not exceeding 2,000 per box per day. So kung mula Monday hanggang Thursday tayo, 4 times 2,000, 8,000. Okay, pag leave out naman po, yung ating budget per head ay not exceeding 1,200 pag leave out may di ba may mga training tag sir, bakit may leave out, bakit may leave in nag leave out tayo depende kasi kulang yung budget sa DO15 po natin yan then next 
Sa Leo 15 din po, nakasulat, kung nagbayad kayo, yun, live-in yan, di ba? Nakabayad po, nagbayad po kayo, live-in. So, it includes na po yung allowable expenses natin on meals, snacks, use some function rooms, part na po yan. Then, provision of audiovisual system. So, LSPs, magtanong po kayo. Kasi baka hotel, sabihin nyo, libre na yung sound system. No, you ask. Kasi po, baka, at the end of the day, pagpunta na, first day nyo, wow, ang linis ng venue. Walang decoration, walang sound system, walang projector. So, sino yung mamumumpul na mamumumplema? Di ba ikaw? So, ang gagawin mo, you ask. Or, that will be part ng procurement po natin sa ating specification, sa ating procurement do, na part yung audio-visual system. Okay. Next po, ay kung free-flowing coffee po, meron, pwede po natin isulat sa ating purchase order na free-flowing coffee. The residential rate shall also include room accommodation. So, pag sinabi residential, part na yung room accommodation. Okay, nakasulat din po sa DO15, ito din po yung budget per bill. Pag less than one day. Pag less than one day po, so ito po yung budget similar nung DO2, ang 2018 po natin. Breakfast, not exceeding 200. Uh, snacks, morning afternoon, not exceeding 100. Then, lunch or dinner, 400. So, okay na ano, kung, kung one day talaga yan, ano, for one day, pero walang accommodation, if you will total that one, pag one day talaga na walang accommodation, meaning three meals, breakfast 200, lunch, dinner, for 400, that will be 800 plus 200, 1,000, di ba? Plus, is last po natin, 100, 100, so total up, 1,200. Di ba yan yung kanina, hindi siya lalagpas ng 1,200 per day, yung kanina na leave out. So, yan po yung ating important facts about budgeting. Okay. So, ito na po yung NEA Budget Estimate Template. In part 2 of this video, we will continue the discussion on using the monitoring and evaluation tools, curriculum vitae, and more details on steps to make sure that your training designs will be recognized by NEA. Thank you for watching. If this video has helped you, please click like, subscribe, and share in return. Thank you and Mabuhay.